It's Long Story Short with Carla Marie, brought to you by Vistaprint. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, I appreciate everyone being here after the technical difficulties. We are ready to roll, though. Um, As you just heard, I am Carla Marie. This is Long Story Short by Vistaprint. I am a new small business owner, but I have been obsessed with small businesses forever. And through this entire series, we are going to learn the ins and outs of small businesses from successful small business owners like today's guest, Adriana Kerrig, the CEO and founder of of one of my favorite brands, Little Words Project. Hello, Adriana. Hi, Carla Marie, how are you? I am doing great. But for those people who don't have a stack of Little Words Project bracelets on their wrists like I do, can you explain what Little Words Project is? Yes, absolutely. First of all, if you don't have a stack, we have to change that. That's first and (laughs) foremost. Um, Little Words Project is a pay it forward jewelry brand all about inspiring kindness in the female world Um, and really the world at large. What we do is we put different inspirational words on each of our bracelets, as you just demonstrated so lovingly. Oh my God, this is like backwards, so I can't see. We put different inspirational words on each of our bracelets. And the idea is to wear your word for as long as you need it and then pass it on one day to someone who needs it more than you do. Um, and the best part is that each one comes with a little tag. And on that tag is a little code that you use to register the bracelet on our mobile app or website. And then you can actually track and see where it goes as it moves from person to person. So just a really fun pay it forward concept um, that has been about eight, well, seven and a half years in the making wow. now. Yeah, it's funny. I got to pass my bracelet along to a child once at a children's hospital, Mm. and I will never forget that moment. And it was one that said, you look great. And it was just one of the coolest feelings in the world. And it wasn't just me with a product. It was a feeling. And that's what I love about Little Words Project. You are more than a brand. You are a personality and a feeling. So explain what Little Words Project's personality is as a company, because I feel like brands need to have a personality on top of just being a brand. Absolutely. I would actually argue that, I mean, there's two different terms. Brand can mean two different things, right? It's just like the name of what you've created, right? So this is your brand. My brand name is Little Words Project. Mm -hmm. But my brand, my identity is that personality. That is what in my head branding is, is what is that personality? What is that other story that you're telling and and the ethos that is kind of woven throughout everything you do? Um, So for us, it's kindness. It's about self-love and positivity. And if you don't love yourself first, it's very hard to pass that kindness out to others, right? You know, so Mm -hmm. it's it's really all about um, having, giving something to our customer that they can look down at and feel inspired by, but then also giving them that ability to pass that on on when the time comes and knowing, like you just said, it's a feeling that you're passing. It's yeah. an experience that you're having. Um, so yeah, I think as far as personality goes, we're all about kindness, self-love and being ourselves, being true to ourselves. We're really transparent on our social media. Um, and I think that really goes a long way with the customer and building that community. And I love what you said about experience. If you're a brand that can make someone feel something when they're purchasing or using your product, then mm-hmm. people are always going to remember your brand. So the fact that you have created a feeling for people is huge. And not every brand does that, but you guys right. have succeeded with that very well. Right. And uh, thank you. And I would also argue that every brand should try to do that. Yeah. Um, just as far as like what we're trying to do here, right? Branding best mm-hmm. practices. I think the number one best practice is uh, giving the customer an experience, a mm-hmm. feeling, something that they want to come back to, something they want to support, you know, and maybe it is just showing how trans, you know, being transparent and saying, I'm making these all in my basement, which is how right. I started because then people kind of sign on board and, and want to get, want to, want to follow along. Um, I can also speak from experience through the year of COVID, um, which was obviously very difficult on a lot of small businesses. We were one of the lucky few that um, I think were able to power through that because of the feeling that our product mm-hmm. gives. And I think that ultimately, you know, if you can weave some sort of feeling or experience into your product, it makes it a lot. Um, it, it really will weather just about any storm, yeah. as was proven this year. So for anyone who is just joining us, by the way, this is Vistaprint. Long story short, I am your host, Carla Marie. This is Adriana Kerrig. She is the CEO and founder of Little Words Project. And today we are talking about best practices for branding your small business. So Adriana, you just mentioned that Little Words Project started in your parents' basement, I believe. It was just Mm -hmm. you. Now you've got 
25 employees. So how do you make sure that your brand is still carried out every day when there's all these other hands in the brand? Oh yeah. That was probably one of the hardest parts about starting and growing a business. Um, it's definitely people, you know, having to yeah. find the right people, put them in the right seat on the bus. It's one of the most difficult things. Um, but it's also one of the most crucial. So for me, it's been a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of, you know, it started just hiring friends of friends, um, and anyone who is willing to work for me and literally bead bracelets. Um, and then, you know, it's become and evolved into finding experts in the industry and trusting what they've done in the past, but also how much they love Little Words Project. I think it goes back to that same message. We're all about, like like I said, it's, it's all about inspiring that kindness and giving that experience and that feeling. So the people who come on board start to feel the same thing. Like you really do become a part of a family when you join Little Words Project's team, but it's that same family experience that everyone feels when they watch our stories or interact with us on social media or come to one of our in-person events once they come back. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's really what it comes down to is when I when I hired these people, it's really just kind of instilling that same sense of community and purpose. And it made them want to make my dream their own. Um, so it's been a lot. It's been, don't get me wrong, it's still been hard. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it's, it's about trust and knowing that you built something that um, is going to kind of, like I said earlier, weather that storm and, and keep people engaged. And feel free, anyone watching, to drop some questions for Adriana. We'll try to get them answered in the stream today. But you mentioned your social media, and I think you guys as a company do such a great job at showing your personalities, everyone in your office, through your social media. You aren't um, just throwing up here, buy this bracelet, buy this bracelet. Like you said, you truly do show the team and everyone around it. You're not hiding who's behind this brand ever. Right. No, because, you know, ultimately we have nothing to hide and, and we're all human beings. And, you know, while there might be, you know, while we might have, we're, we're not perfect. And I think that's part of what makes yeah. people so engaged with us. You know, it is seeing like, this is the nicest that I probably have looked in multiple months. Now, I did give birth two months ago. So I mean, kind of a big deal. I have a little bit of an excuse, but before that, I still looked a mess. Like I was coming into the office, you know, rolling out of bed. Like I don't really subscribe to like dress how you want to feel or whatever. It's like dress how you need to feel comfortable yeah. to get things done. Yeah. Um, but we show that. We show that on our stories. We show the behind the scenes. And I think it's this isn't like just your typical conversation about branding because, you know, when you think branding, you think visual branding, really, mm -hmm. right? Which is very important. And we're going through and we'll like- we'll do our that. Two weeks in your next episode. <laughs> yep. We have, we're already on like our 10th iteration of this brand because we're always trying to find the visuals that will catch up to what we've established in okay. person and as a brand concept. And I do really think it comes down to what, like you said, we're how transparent we are and that I'll show you the messy middle and the the beginning and and hopefully you'll stick around till you know the end which hopefully never comes <laughs> never so you mentioned that there are a few iterations of the brand so little words project is geared towards females but last year you actually launched a unisex line so yep. as a brand then how do you continue to branch out and grow your company but always staying true to your brand yeah i think it comes down to as well knowing our our customer and knowing that that customer is very much so giving us feedback right so yeah. we have a really great feedback loop just in our comments our dms it's one of the number one things that i wouldn't give up for like five years was instagram because i was the one who i was like i need to see every comment i need to see wow. every dm i was in the weeds with it and then recently and you know now we're going on year eight in november um so we've had a couple of years now where i haven't had any involvement with the instagram and it's so funny because i still have members of my team will send me comments that or, or DMs where people are like, hey, Adriana, like for whatever reason, they still think I'm, I'm the one manning it. That's yeah, amazing though. That's amazing. Cause I think it really does show that like, we really have created this culture of like, you can DM the founder of a company and cool. it's no question. Um, that's getting away a little bit from the original question about the unisex, but yeah, it's, it's knowing that customer and knowing what they've been asking for. And, you know, Kindness is something that exists amongst all people, regardless mm -hmm. of how you, you know, identify. And I think that was something we really wanted to see carried through to this year. Now, I'm, I'll be honest, the unisex line is not nearly as good as every other collection because I love it. I have one. I love it as far as as far as sales, right? Here's okay, the fair. transparency. Like it didn't sell. It didn't sell as well as we wanted it to, I should say. Um 
But the point being, we still have it. We still want there to be something, not necessarily something for everyone because it's hard to do and then you kind of get away from your original purpose. But for our customer who maybe is genuinely just the female 18 to 35 year old girl who we think her to be, she wants to buy something for her boyfriend, her her father, her Mm. son, her little brother. We want her to have that option. Um, So it's not necessarily appealing to men, but appealing to the women that have men in their lives that they want to be able to involve in this community that they love so much. And that's kind of Every time we launch something new, we want to think, how is our customer going to be able to, how is this going to enrich her experience with Little Words Project? When you, you mentioned events back when we had those, what was it like creating your brand in person? Was that a different experience? Did you try to emulate that feeling at an event or because I've never had to create an event for a brand. So what is that process like? Oh my gosh. Well, when we're doing Lock. those events, it's it's really just kind of duplicating what we do online. It's like, okay, you know, if we're going to have if we're going to be communicating with our customers via DM or comment and we're saying, "Thank you so much. We're so excited to have you or, you know, we appreciate your business, whatever," then we kind of do that same thing in person, right? So it's just putting together an experience for the customer. A lot of times it's a shopping experience, obviously, because what better opportunity to buy little words than to see them in person, right. stack them up, see how they and they a little ASMR for you. I don't know if you can hear that. I love it. <laughs> my cats stack. love it too. <laughs> They're so pretty. Yeah, right. My pet, my my baby has been loving it lately, and I'm like, oh, I'm teaching you well. Um, but anyway, so when you have those in person events, you really do get that uh, option to kind of have that FaceTime with the customer. They can play with the bracelets. They feel the love, and they're seeing me. They're seeing Mariah. They're seeing our team that we've built in the flesh. And Mm. I can't tell you how many times people have said, oh my God, I feel like I know you. I feel like we're best friends already. I'm like, that's the point. We wanted this to be a friendship for our customers and really feel like we're part of their friend group. Is it as a business owner then, obviously you believe in the the process of your personality is your brand. You're very much involved. It's got to be daunting as a business over owner a bit. Like you said, you were in the weeds to really be your brand all the time. Yeah, (laughs) it's definitely daunting. Um, I will say that sometimes it's funny, like I do. So uh, earlier iteration of the brand, we considered ourselves like the nice girls and we still do. That's still very much so who we are. (laughs) Still nice. We're still nice. But there are there's a part of me that also identifies as like, you know, a, a empowered boss you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to curse here. But and I'm like, I've, I've got that colorful personality. And sometimes I'm like, I don't want anyone to misconstrue what nice is, right? So mm-hmm. sometimes I'm like, I I'm, I know I'm nice. But there's also, you know, that 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 part of me that got to where I've gotten. And it's not because I kind of just allowed things to happen to me. I went out and I got, I grabbed them. Yep. Um, and I think that what one of the things we wanted to do as a brand is kind of make sure that customers know that you can be nice and still get somewhere. You know, you can be nice and still advocate for yourself. You don't have to just be a quiet, nice girl. Mm-hmm. So we tried to kind of take that word and reinvent it in a way. Um, but to answer your question, it, it had always been a little difficult for me because I'm like, I'm definitely really nice, <laughs> but I also want to like curse every once in a while. Sure. I'm like that's okay. So and your brand can evolve and your brand's personality right. can evolve, but it's oh, staying yeah. true to what you're putting out there. That's imp- exactly. what's important. And in a moment, we're actually going to get into our one minute wisdom for today, but I do have another question for you. And then we're also going to get into questions from people. I know there's a bunch coming in in the chat, so we're going to get to those. But I'm curious how far into the process of creating your company, of creating Little Words Project, did you realize, because this isn't just a company, it's not just a business, it is actually now a brand. And what was that moment like? Like, What made you realize it was more than a company? You know, I, I, I'm on it. If I'm honest, Mm-hmm. I felt that way from the beginning. I love um, that. And I think that's important. I think it's, you know, uh, even just back when I was starting it, you know, there was a lot of people who doubted what the product looked like. It was like, are you sure you want to do those little white letters? Are you sure you don't want it? It looks like my child could make it. Like it was always, I was always playing, like fighting this uphill, like it, their juvenile battle. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And, you know, people would say, well, you know, why don't you just make an Etsy page and start there? And, and look, Etsy is great. Etsy is a wonderful starting point for so many businesses. But for me, I knew in my head that I was going to be fighting that uphill battle about what they looked like. So I knew it needed a brand identity. I knew it needed uh, experience. I knew it needed to like the customer needed to come to the website and see a video, see a story, understand this was a community that they were joining. Um, so from the very jump, we really knew that that was important. Um, and it's really been the thing that has carried us through the entire time. And why I honestly think that these bracelets, which are so simple, and I will own that we were the first to kind of bring back the look seven I years ago. <laughs> now, I will not say I invented them because we've all been making these since the camp days, obviously. Yes. <laughs> camp. But the look was not accepted when I first started. Like I said, even best friends and family saying, I think you should go in like a gold direction. And I was like, no, we're going to do this. Um, but that's my point. I think that's why we're able to sell so many. I think that's yes. why so many customers love them. It's because it's more than just a product. It's an experience. And the product is kind of second second thought, I love which that. is pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> it, the feeling is first. So exactly. we're going to be back with more from Adriana in a second. Well, in a minute, actually. Today's One Minute Wisdom is from Olivia Christian. Hi, I'm Olivia Christian, brand strategist and author of Ask Olivia. I've been asked to share some advice on how to speak to your audience. Now, as an entrepreneur or small business owner, you likely think the entire world is your potential customer base. Everybody should want your product or service. And while I get it, Trying to speak to everyone will result in you really speaking to no one. Instead, get specific about what differentiates you from your competitors. Talk about your experience, your special ingredient, or your perspective. Tell your customers how you want them to feel or what you're trying to accomplish on their behalf through your product or service. When your customers know that you're speaking to them, that's when they'll listen. I hope this helps. Oh, thank you, Olivia. That was awesome. Okay, so there are a lot of people in the chat right now saying things like, uh, Mitchell says, Vistaprint has helped me out so many times. They are a great company. Yes, they are. And obviously, they support small businesses, which is huge. And that's why we're here today with Vistaprint doing long story short, taking Adriana's vast experience as a brand and trying to make it super short for you guys as small <laughs> business owners. So I love this question. Casey asked for you, Adriana. What was the first word you put on a bracelet? That's a good one. And it's not one that I don't think anyone would expect. It was actually laugh. Oh, wow. um, it was my prototype word that I had made. Okay. I was like making a version of this that would be, you know, super, super cute. It was laugh. Um, and the reasoning was, you know, I grew up my whole life dealing a lot with negativity from other girls. I was bullied. I mean, it was like from elementary school, like through college, literally, it just became a different kind yeah. of bullying. It became more like competitive cruelty that so often exists in girl world, as yep. we know, <laughs> well, as you know, I'm sure are familiar. Mm -hmm. um, but so the whole reason that I wanted to start this was to bring kindness back into girl world. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the ways to do that in my head was wearing these bracelets, passing them around and making people feel some type of hot confidence, kindness, love, happiness. Um, so laugh for me was my moment to look down and remember that, you know, you have to just laugh off the haters at the yes. end of the day. It's really what it is so basic, but it was like, I just got to <laughs> laugh through what people are going to say. And I knew I was going to be looked at because I, I had felt like I was kind of, you know, on display my entire life mm -hmm. just by being picked on. You're always worried that someone's going to say yeah. something. Um, but you just kind of had to, I don't know, like it just, I let that fuel me Wonderful. and yeah, yeah. laughter is life's best medicine. So I'm always saying, if you're not laughing, you're crying. So just keep laughing. Oh my God. I love that. <laughs> I so know. Isha wants to know how critical, critical is social media these days when it comes to brand promotion and growth? You know, I think it's extremely critical. That said, I, you know, started it when it was, when Instagram had like just kind of come out. It was actually, Instagram was one of the founding kind of catalysts for me because I saw that it existed and I thought to myself, you know, what would be cute, you know, we should do like a certain hashtag that, you know, you could click it and then you could see where the bracelet has been. So it's a hashtag with numbers. So it was a whole concept that eventually got me to the tag number. Mm -hmm. So point being, uh -huh. social media launched my business in so many words. Um, and it's still such an incredible outlet. Still one of the best um, uses of, or for our marketing and, and swiping up and people have direct, we have direct access to our customers. So I think that is so huge. Mm -hmm. 
But I do think that over time, social media has kind of evolved to be a little bit of an uglier place that, you know, I thank God every day didn't exist when I was a kid, um, just considering everything I did go through already. Um, But but you're there for the, you as a company, your product is there now for those kids who are going through that when you didn't have maybe a feel good company to latch onto and carry with you every day. You are that company. You're more than a bracelet company. So all we can say is, and all we can do now is keep doubling down on our social media efforts, keep being ourselves, keep showing up for our customer and just, you know, providing that safe place online that doesn't always exist. So, you know, I mean, we Mm -hmm. tolerate zero bullshit on our website, um, on our website, on our social media channels. Um, And you can kind of see that when you come there and feel like it's a safe place. Well, you guys also have teamed up with a ton of brands and one of them being Nike. So what made Nike say, hey, let's work with the bracelet company? Because when I think Nike, I think sneakers, not necessarily bracelets Bracelets. that jingle on my wrist. So what was that partnership like for your brand? That partnership was incredible. (laughs) Um, We were shocked. They literally sent us a message through our contact us page on the site. And I, uh, yeah, Mariah and I literally had to do like a double take. We were like, are they kidding? Like, is this Nike Nike? <laughs> uh, because, you know, you're always, you just never think you're mm-hmm. going to get there. Um, it's almost like we peaked, but no. So the Nike experience was so incredible. Um, they, for the exact same reason that, you know, Joe Lynn buys our bracelets from down the street in New Jersey is the reason that Nike wanted to work with us. And it's because they saw through what we've been putting out there that we are exactly who we say we are, right? So we are that that kindness brand that is meant to inspire. And they were doing a women's event and it's so perfectly, there was mm-hmm. so much synergy there between us um, and what our message is and what they wanted these girls to feel at the end of their event. Um, so whether it's sneakers or a feel good bracelet, it's about empowering women to feel their best and be their best selves. Um, but yeah, that experience, and I'll tell you one quick story. When we went to the Nike headquarters and met with the team that was, you know, putting this on out in LA, um, Mariah and I like go show up in like our best, you know, Nike inspired fits. We were like so pumped. We had our wrists on and I get into the meeting. They wanted to like meet us. So I'm walking into this, like what looked like a big boardroom of all these Nike execs in the LA area and everyone who's been working on the project. And they just like, wanted to hear from us. And it, it, they, I gave my little pitch of who we are. And I started crying Oh my god! <laughs> because, because I was like, what is this moment? But let me tell you at least no less than five men and women in that room were crying with me. Oh my and god. I think it just goes to show that like, we really, you know, we can just impact people with our words and, and whether you have a bracelet or not, it's just, really being true to yourself, being vulnerable and open is always going to get you the most authentic and best um, response. Well, you have proved that a company can be more than a revenue stream. It is, and and in, in most cases, that should be your goal is to be more than a revenue stream. What are you doing for people, especially when you're a small business, right? What are you doing for your community? And Mm -hmm. you guys, have clearly proven the importance of doing that and the payoff of that right. because people want to continue to support you and keep you as your company in their lives. And they're going to keep coming back and buying your product. And it's yeah. a win-win for everyone in that situation. Yeah. And I will say, um, not to interrupt you, but no. when it comes to branding and when it comes to what our brand uh, has become, which is really more of a community mm-hmm. at the end of the day, when we look at our marketing, like, um, you know, best practices and like, what is the, what is what is the thing that's getting us the most love and the most um, outreach or just like mom brain, I'm whatever. I don't have the word, but it is grassroots. Yes. <laughs> it's people. It's, it's word of mouth. It's people mm-hmm. telling people about the brand. So we actually just launched an ambassador program and it's like the most perfect opportunity for customers and affiliate members to be coming in, getting these codes and being able to share them with others because that's all they want to do is talk about the product once they wear it and once yeah. they get. Um, so yeah, it really is like creating something that people want to talk about. Ultimately, is going to get you. And again, I don't take credit for that creating it. It's just kind of how it started to evolve. Once it started helping people, people wanted to talk about it. And I every day pinch myself and I'm like, 
I started these like me and my parents. You did. It. You I'm did. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to wrap my head around it sometimes. Well, you've done that. You've done it all. And it's, it's been amazing yeah. to watch your brand and your company and all of it grow. But Karina Elizabeth has one question for you. And we're going to end on this one. She said, for someone that's new to your brand, new to Little Words Project, what are some key factors you hope they take away? Ooh, oh my gosh. Uh, the kindness always wins. That being true to yourself is the ultimate number one thing you can do for your happiness and that once you are happy and true to yourself mm -hmm. you can spread that happiness to others you can spread that kindness on because at the end of the day it all really starts with you oh my god love that see i love that you've proved <laughs> the importance of being a brand and not just a company today for anyone who is a small business owner or future small business owner what you have shared today is so impactful for them and so important. So we're going to keep doing this week after week. Adriana and I's conversation will actually be turned into a podcast. So next week, you'll get that audio and you'll be able to listen back. If you missed any, any of it, share it with friends or family. And then after that, so in two weeks, we are going to do another stream about visual branding with the founders of Happy Box. So I'm really excited to talk to them. They are two sisters who launched a company together. So that'll be a lot of fun. Adriana, everyone needs to go follow Little Word project on Instagram for feel good time and uh, go check out the brand yes. littlewordsproject.com. Thank you so much for being here. I know you've got a baby who needs to eat. So I appreciate <laughs> you taking time out of your day for yes. doing this with us. Oh my God. Absolutely. And one quick shout out to Vista Print, who was yeah. in fact the people who printed our original cards when That's we true. first launched the product um so it's just so incredible to have been a part of this and that's another huge part which i'm sure you'll get into next week or your next yeah. episode of visual branding is having those um those pieces those touch points that the customer can take home and learn about your product vistaprint is the the way to go there so that's amazing shout I didn't out even know that. thank you i know right? Full circle. I, like, a little a little late to mention it but i'm just so grateful to so have been cool. a part of this thank you for letting me be the kickoff sorry about all the <laughs> the technical difficulties oh, to our fine. viewers no no thank you everyone for being here thank you for your yes. questions thank you for supporting small businesses and we'll see you back here again in two weeks